Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Winterhelm Games, and we are back with another edition of our Halloween scary stories. Um, allegedly true, obviously, these are stories that have been handed in uh, to be told. So, this is a game with Mr. Nightmare, um, who uh, does a fantastic job narrating them. Uh, if you don't, if you haven't heard of him or haven't went to his channel, uh, this obviously belongs to him. I'm just commenting and uh, reacting to it. So uh, it's his stories. Well, it's his video stories we're giving to him. Um, and uh, yeah, so go and check out his channel. And give, show him some love. So until then, we have uh, four to get through. Let's have a nosy. I'm currently a freshman in college. I came home this past week for a funeral but let's backtrack a little. My senior year in high school, I was in the library during study hall doing some computer science work on the computer since my laptop at home didn't have JCreator on it. Anyways, this boy who was in my class sat next to me since those two computers were the only ones with JCreator. He was a really tall, very pale boy. He had long black hair that covered one of his eyes. He wore an anti-flag tee, ripped jean jacket, and Doc Martens. He never spoke to anyone in class, and I'd never seen him with anyone else. So I took a seat, and he looked up at me like I committed murder. <laughs> I dare you sit next to me. He looked away and started rummaging through my bag as a distraction. As my head was down, I heard him chuckle and then mumble, Of course. I froze with my head still down towards my bag. I just dismissed it as him talking to his computer, as code can be quite frustrating. I sat back up and quickly typed in my login details. To break the awkwardness, I said, She assigns too much homework, I can barely keep up. His eyes stayed locked on the computer screen. You want the answers, don't you? I laughed and said, No thanks, I won't learn anything that way. Usually I would have said yes, but I didn't want to see his evil stare again. It was like he was staring into my soul. He laughed again in that creepy laugh, so creepy that I had to close my eyes and cringe. I opened them and looked over to see him gone. The strange thing was he left his flash drive. I waited about 10 minutes to see if he would come back, but he didn't. Study hall ended at 1 and it was 12.50. I decided I would take it and give it back to him tomorrow in computer science class. I threw it in a little box above my bed. Gotta admit, it was an awesome flash drive. It was a Swiss army knife with a flash drive in the middle. Here's the crazy part. After that, he never came to school again. He was notorious for being absent, so for the first month, no one batted an eye. However, May rolled around and we were all getting ready to graduate. I had completely forgotten about the flash drive until two days ago when I came home. I needed one, and I remembered I still had that boy's. I scanned it with my Norton, and it said it was all safe. I was planning to delete all this stuff so I could put my PowerPoint for business class on it. Naturally, however, I started snooping through his files. The first thing I saw was a folder named Computer Science. I opened it, and all the answers to every assignment was there. I thought, damn, maybe that's why he left it, so I could copy off of him. Maybe because he knew he was never coming back. I went back and the second folder was music. Then if he was trying to graduate himself, why would he just leave it? I don't understand maybe letting someone take a look. But you're not really meant to. Like, as he says, you wouldn't learn anything that way. But why would he not back? Hmm. I kind of had to open that one to see what he listened to. Surprisingly, not what I expected. There were only three songs. Running on Empty by Jackson Brown, White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane, and Helter Skelter by The Beatles. I went back again. There was an untitled folder. Inside it was AP Literature. There were a bunch of essays and various junk. There was one called The Best Doc. I opened it, and it was merely a 10-page document of notebook pages filled entirely with his first and last name handwritten. I went back again. This is where it gets weird. 
He had taken pictures of the emergency escape plan posters on the door in every classroom. There was a picture of a lit cigarette on the bathroom floor, and another picture of some coins on the bathroom floor with a yellow post-it note next to it saying, CHUMP CHANGE in all caps. Now this is the weird part. There was a picture of me, taken while I was reading a book in class. From the looks of it, it was my English class that he was not in. There was also a document titled, Rest in Peace 2... Dot, 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 but it was empty when I opened it. I still have no idea if this was a joke or not. For all I know, he never showed up again because he realized that he lost his hard drive. This story hmm. happened a few years back to me and a friend who I'll call Ali. We're now both 15, making us 12 when this story occurred. Okay, so me and Ali have been friends since second grade, and we would usually spend all weekends and free time together. We always have been into paranormal and ghost stuff. We had every reason to believe that every house we ever went into was haunted. We would go on ghost hunts like the TV shows with a flip phone to record the sounds. But there will always be one night that stands out to me that still haunts me to this day. It was around midnight and we were hyper and awake like most kids of our age on the weekends. So we decided to do another ghost hunt in my house. We got the flip phone ready and we borrowed my dad's touchscreen to actually videotape. This was the first and last time we used that. My basement was not like most because the house I was living in at the time was very old and therefore very old fashioned. So down the stairs, there's one main big room that we use for storage, and a little further there was another medium-sized room for the washer and the dryer, and the farthest was a small little cell-type room that we never used, mainly because everyone was too creeped out to go in it. Me and Allie walked down the stairs, turned on the camera and flip phone recorder, and we started asking the usual questions you would see on TV, like, is there anybody here, give me a sign if you're here, and that type of thing. We finally got tired of it and went back upstairs and into my room to be so excited as we reviewed our first video recording. This was a big step for us because we wanted to be ghost hunters so bad. We were watching and we kind of got disappointed as we didn't find anything in the video or voice recording. Usually we would make something up like a footstep that wasn't ours to make us feel less bad but this time we were so excited about the video we didn't even want to make anything up. We couldn't sleep, so we played a few board games, and then we both agreed to review it again because maybe we missed something. Awesome. And oh boy, we did. While reviewing the tape again, we both could just feel this bad energy coming from it. I guess we didn't realize it before because we were too filled with excitement. We went on anyway, and as we paid more attention, we could actually hear footsteps that weren't ours. Then what showed up on the tape, I still see when I close my eyes. It was the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. The camera was on Ali, and behind her was this figure that looked like a distorted, almost human thing with bright white eyes that almost seemed as if they were watching you through the video. At that point we shut it off, and we were both in complete shock. We couldn't tell my father as he was asleep being so early in the morning. We both decided to just not tell anybody and keep it our secret. Even though we never went into that basement again, we both still talk and sometimes even dream about it. To this day, I don't know if it was our imagination, or if there was something with us in that basement, but I'll never go in there again. I don't know. I wasn't sure if that would be anything at all there, but yeah, I mean, whenever you realize something could be down with you as well, it'll but definitely uh, put the spooks up you. <laughs> For what of a better way. But, um, there you are. Number two. So, this all happened during Halloween in 2014. My name is Max, and I'm from a small town in Finlay, Ohio. I used to go to a high school at County School about 10 minutes from where I lived called Van Buren High School. Van Buren was a nice little village with good people for the most part. But the only problem was that there were some evil creeps that could be found there if you knew where to look. The biggest hotspot for them to be found was the Van Buren State Park. Everyone knew that the state park had a little infamy to it, as it was known for some rapes and the like. Now I've been to the park many times with friends and classmates, and nothing bad ever happened to us, so I never thought much of it. 
I have a lot of good memories of the place actually. Like the many times my friends and I would bike the trails and set off the works bombs in the woods or go fishing in the lake. However, fast forward to my senior year at Van Buren on the day of Halloween. My friend Ian and I saw the darker side of Van Buren State Park. The summer before my senior year, I enlisted in the Army National Guard, so it was important that I worked out and stayed in shape. So that day, I asked my best friend Ian if he wanted to go run the trails in the park with me after school, and he said he would, as he likes to work out when he can as well. It was probably about 4 o'clock in the afternoon when I pulled into one of the parking lots, waiting for Ian to meet me there, when I saw this old <clears throat> silver car with a bald and just disturbing man suspiciously sitting in the lot. Knowing that creeps hang out at the parks, I glanced over to check out what he was doing when I noticed he was staring at me and would not take his eyes off of me. It was a very unsettling stare, one that made him look hungry and me uncomfortable. His eyes were wide open, and I'm pretty sure he had a frown, or maybe a grin. We made eye contact, and he nodded at me as if he were trying to say hello, but would not drop his glare. I nodded back but broke eye contact since I was pretty uncomfortable. However, I noticed out of the corner of my eye that he was still staring. At this point, I had enough, and I sped out of there and pulled out of the parking lot. But when I looked in my rearview mirror, I saw he was following me. This made me floor my gas pedal, and I sped to my high school parking lot where I lost him. I called Ian and told him that I was at the high school, and that he might have to deal with this creep alone. And then my stomach sank. I got a text from Ian saying, here. So I made my way back there. And sure enough, right when I pulled in, I saw Ian's car, and two spaces away was the scary bald guy in the silver car, still staring. I nodded to Ian for him to follow me in his car to a different parking lot at the park, and we made our way over there. We were safe, or so we thought, and got out of our cars to walk down the hill to check out the trails before we ran them. I don't really like to run with items in my pockets, yeah. so we began to walk back up the hill when we saw that old silver car circling in the lot looking for us. At the angle we were at on the hill, he must not have been able to find us, although we could see him. We waited a few minutes before walking up the hill because we figured the two of us, who were athletes, could take on this one guy. As we reached the top of the hill, he was gone. Feeling pretty safe, Ian and I decided to still run the trails, but I made sure to grab a rock to use as a weapon for my own peace of mind in case we would run into the possible rapist or killer in the woods. I'll never know the man's intentions, but given that place's notoriety and his disturbing look, it couldn't have been good. Nowadays I've graduated Van Buren and I'm an infantryman in the National Guard while attending Bowling Green State University. Sometimes when I go back home to visit, I like to go for drives at night, and sometimes I like to check the state park just to see what monsters lurk there. I'm always armed with a knife, and I'm in good shape, but it still makes me uneasy. I'm sure one of these days, I might encounter something like that again. But I'm not stupid or crazy, because as soon as I do, I'm hightailing it out of there once again. So as for anyone else, make sure that if you go camping or hiking at state parks, that you are somehow armed, no self-defense and never go alone. Yeah, that's fair enough. I, would, I think it goes for any place, though, in any park or forest, no matter where in the world you are. Always be sure that someone knows where you are and uh, that you have someone with you or, you know, something that you could use or defend yourself with, I suppose. But that depends on whether it would be legal in terms of where you live and what you're doing. But, yes, it's always... Nice to feel a bit safe whenever you're out and about, especially in forests or places like that at night. Number in four. The room next to my bed is a big storage closet. It doesn't have a regular door like you would expect. It's a kind of big square door without a knob that just comes off when you grab it by the edges. So rewind to several years ago when I was 19. I remember the first time it happened. I went to sleep and woke up in the morning to find that the door had been opened and was leaning on the wooden edge of my bed. Now this wasn't the strangest thing ever, as it had happened in the past. After all, there were no hinges or anything holding the door in. I pushed the door back into the wall and got ready for school. 
The next night, I woke up around 4 in the morning. I could have sworn I had woken up to a noise. I sat up and looked around my room in the dark, and noticed the door was leaning on the edge of my bed again. Now I was concerned that the edges to the hole in the wall were starting to chip away, and the door could no longer fit as tightly as it used to. I left it that way overnight and fixed it in the morning. The following night, I was having trouble sleeping. It had to be at least two hours of my rolling around bed trying to fall asleep. That's when I heard a huge thump, and I knew what it was. I could even see it in the dark. The door fell open again. <sighs> I was so done with this. I mentally decided to just leave it open from now on. That's when I heard the slightest movement of a plastic bag from inside of the closet. My heart literally skipped a beat when I heard this. There was no draft in the room at all. I hesitantly flicked on the light switch and looked into the open closet. My biggest fear came true when I saw someone inside the closet peering at me in my bed. Within maybe half a second of my turning on the lights, he tried to hide as if I didn't see him. I couldn't even move. All I could do was scream the word, Dad. I screamed so loud it took my dad maybe 10 seconds to make it to my room. I pointed at the closet and he looked inside. Only then did I finally feel safe to get up and stand behind him. My dad crawled all the way in there, and he couldn't find anyone though. He came out and assured me I was just seeing things, and I started to question that myself. Still, I couldn't sleep in that room. I slept on the floor in my parents' room with a blanket. Well, I wouldn't say slept, as before that could even happen, I heard my bedroom door open from down the hall outside, and then someone literally ran down the stairs and out the front door, slamming it behind them. My parents heard it, and it was only then they believed me. We tried to chase whoever it was down, but he was gone. We later found out he was hiding in an empty container inside the closet. God. I know that a lot of places people would maybe keep their doors unlocked and things like that, or run down the shop or whatever it may be, but never take that risk. Always make sure everything is well locked up. No matter how many, how little time you're going for, God knows there's always some kind of weird person that might try to make, make advantage, take advantage of it. But um, that's that one. Thank you very much for watching though, um, those were quite good, the previous four were quite good as well, um, so hopefully they'll both end up okay on the channel, and uh, we'll try and get uh, at least another one or show done of something else, um, I'll see what I can do, maybe for Halloween I'll do another one, so we will see. Take care for now folks.